Now, Kenyans of Asian heritage have been gazetted as the country's 44th tribe. In a gazette notice dated July the 22nd, President Uru Kenyatta termed the community as an integral part of the national fabric. Early this year, Farah Manzur, a human rights activist, said she has been seeking the inclusivity of the Asian community as Kenyans for five years. She met members of the Asian community in January to brief them about the petition. Those in the meeting were Hindus, Muslims, both Sunni and Shia, and Sikhs. Now, the Bora and Gon. So, well, today we are hosting Farah Manzur along with Joshua Odongo Onono to tell us the genesis of this recent development. And before we get to that conversation, they're pretty much excited to have here, to, to be here, of course, yes. and, and have a beautiful song for us. Thank you. Okay, take it on. <laughs> Raisi uhuru, tunakushukuru, hapa tuko kwetu, wa hindi wa Kenya. Tumetambuliwa, kabila la Kenya, arubaini na ine, asante sana, tuwa shukuru raisi. Arbaine na ine, hakuna wasi wasi. Arbaine na ine, tuwa shukuru raisi. Arbaine na ine, sisi ni wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya. Wa hindi wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya. Sisi ni wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya. Wa hindi wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya. Sisi ni wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya, wa hindi wa Kenya, kabila la Kenya. All right, beautiful. Thank you very much. And we'll definitely be having a conversation with them on what really this means for them being recognized as the 44th tribe in Kenya and what changes will it make to them as a particular community. We wrap it up for KTN Home, but that conversation, we come with it and other stories on KTN News. So don't go too far. My name is Akisa Wandera. Good afternoon. That's for that, our reporter Karen Derry joining us live from the county of Nyeri. Let's get back to that conversation I'd promised you on the 44th tribe in Kenya has a has finally gotten formal recognition and that is the Asian community and I have uh, f uh, them in studio to tell us more about really what this means for them as a community. On my immediate left is Farah Manzur. She's the pioneer of the 44th Tribe Agenda. Thank you for coming in. And we also have Joshua Odongo Onono, who is a co-pioneer of this agenda as well. It must be a very exciting time for you as Asians. Yes, it is. Thank you very much, Akisa, mm -hmm. for hosting us. I'm sure you want to know how my journey started. Definitely. Uh, I am a human rights activist. Mm -hmm executive director of Mother's Lab Foundation, mm -hmm. a politician as well. I ran for the Westland seat, but I lost in the primaries honorably. And uh, this journey of mine began in 2010, uh, when I brought in an icon from London, His Excellency Ansar Bernie to Kenya mm -hmm. on Somali piracy, human trafficking, and modern day slavery. I started this with my brother, Shahid Mahmood, uh, my uncle, who's a businessman, Iqbal Rashid. We were the three of us with this uh, issue of getting recognized. And we went with His Excellency and Sabeni. I approached Honorable Ray Laudinga in 2010. And we met Beatrice Gambo, who was the lady in charge for women empowerment, mm -hmm. because uh, Mother's Lab Foundation deals with Asian women empowerment and Muslim women empowerment. But uh, Honorable Rayla that day had an urgent uh, meeting to attend to, could not see us. I then tried again, but he was busy. Uh, 2013, I went to the presidential debate. And uh, after the debate was over, we all went to say Jambu to the presidential aspirants who were at the podium. This was off record. It was not discussed in the debate. And the first person I met was Honorable Rayla. And I asked him again. But of course, he was busy with campaigns. And he said, we will talk later about it. And uh, His Excellency, the president, was also an, an aspirant at that time. And he was standing there. And I asked him for the recognition. And he gave me a very positive response. 
And he says, hopefully, when I'm elected, come and see me in my office. And we exchange number with his PA, Jomo Kishaga. And definitely, that's how you finally got into the recognized as a community. That's right. How is the whole community taking this? Well, everybody's very happy. And uh, uh, the, the thing is, uh, Akisa, we've been in this country for the last 100 years. Mm -hmm. Uh, the recognition, uh, I, I'm sure you want to know, you know, how it's going to benefit us. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, uh, the business people uh, in Kenya, the Kenyan Asian businessmen, they've always lived in fair. Their accounts, business accounts are offshore accounts. Okay, some of them, not all of them. So, uh, most of us have investments here. But some have that fair. So this will create the faith and the confidence to invest and, and, you know, invest in Kenya. We don't have to go looking for money out there mm -hmm. when the Kenyan Asian man uh, can give us 0% interest, uh, you know, uh, for borrowing. So this is a plus point. And then we, want, we will integrate socially. Uh, we have integrated. We have so many uh, Kenyan nations I met along this journey of mine who have married, intermarried, and uh, they're there. Mm -hmm. It's just that uh, we have always uh, felt <coughs> that this is not home uh, okay. because uh, as I grew up um, uh, in school, I studied with Africans, Somalis, Asians. Mm -hmm. And uh, what was very interesting was when I now d uh, went out to work. And uh, you know, we, I used to hear this slogan, Mwindi, Rudi Kwako, Rudi India. You know, India is not my home. I'm a fifth generation. My great grandfather, Mohammedin Bhutta was a pioneer and he also fought for the freedom. And together with Makhan Singh, Manilal Desai, Sir Gama Pinto, A.M. Jivanji, they fought for the freedom of our country, Kenya. Right. There have been concerns, uh, Joshua, that the timing for this whole recognition is very suspect. The campaigns are on full throttle and this looks like um, a campaign decision, so to speak. What are your thoughts? First of all, I want to thank God for this moment and also want to thank KTN for giving us this opportunity, for hosting us. What I would like to say is there's nothing political about it. This is a journey that started well, way, way back. It's seven years. And uh, there were just some small misdemeanors. There is uh, one lady, the nominated MP, Sonia Berdi, mm -hmm. uh, uh, purportedly tried to mislead uh, the Sikh into believing that they could be recognized separately. So we were in the process. She also purportedly started another process, so in the end, it kind of delayed mm -hmm. the whole process. There was an article. Yes, article. yes. Article. and there was an article, mm -hmm. I think you have a copy, yes. where uh, it was very clear of what the nominated uh, member of parliament was trying to do with the six. Mm -hmm. So this thing kind of delayed the process. Mm -hmm. So it's just a coincidence that it has come during the election period, but there's nothing political about it. Mm -hmm. Yes. For you, what does this mean for you as an individual? Okay, as a leader, you know I was there in the last election yes. as the presidential running mate to Mohammed Dida. Mm -hmm. I believe in integration. I believe in actually finding the sense of common purpose. I believe in togetherness. So this thing means a lot to me because uh, it is going to help this country. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be elected to serve the people. So I chose this direction. So many Kenyans have been asking, where did I go to? Where is our youngest uh, a deputy presidential candidate, but this is what I've been doing mm -hmm. with uh, my sister Farah Manzu mm -hmm. because this thing is going to actually help. It has so many positive consequences to this country, be it business, be it integration, be it employment opportunities, mm -hmm. be it the general commerce of this country. So it has a very big benefit and the long run, in the long run, it's going to actually uplift the economic base of our country. There have also been concerns, Farah, that um among the population that Asians like to segregate themselves, so to speak, when we talk about integration and their claims that you like to keep to yourself, how will this help now in social integration? Will we, what will we be seeing? This is positive, Akisa, because, uh, uh, yes, you're right, uh, they have lived in fear, okay? Uh, 1971, what happened in Uganda after Idi Amin got rid of the Asians? And then uh, we had the 1982 coup in Kenya. And they always lived in fear. Many left the country, OK? And just yesterday, uh, two days back, after we got gazetted, I went to KFC, Limuru Road. 
and there was a young Kenyan Asian boy, and he didn't see me. I was, uh, you know, in the corner, and he was wearing a Kenyan uh, wrist brand, you know, the flag. And he comes, and, and I think he's a regular customer there. So he said he ordered for chicken and whatever he was ordering, and he said, "The uh, Dayangu, Mimi Sasa, the 44 tribe, Kabila la Kenya," and he hugged her, and I was like, you know. There is that positive thing in our children now. It has moved them to that. They're so proud of this mm -hmm. because you know you feel at home. Because when, when previously we were told, uh, you know, a case of Rudy Kwako, and not in a bad way, you know, uh, the Kenyans used to joke with us, Wendy, Rudy India. So I have been in the airline industry for a good 17 years, okay? Uh, then my last job was PricewaterhouseCoopers, and then later got into women empowerment issues. And I also lobbied for women in the Kadi Scots. I was the first woman with Dr. William Matunga mm -hmm. uh, to make sure women are there in the Kadi Scots because I was a victim of inheritance issues. It took me 14 years to get justice. Mm -hmm. And uh, th this has, uh, you know, this, this has moved us um, because, uh, you know, the, the younger generation, uh, they feel that, yes, this is home now. See, previously you always felt you know, you're always told, you know, in, not in a bad way, even in a joking manner, when you're sitting in a matatu, mm -hmm. Wendy, or India, you know, not in a bad way, sometimes yeah, I joke with you, you see? So this has actually uh, made us feel at home. And this recognition, the president made it very clear when I took the Asian delegation. And he's also one of the pioneers because he believed in my cause, Joshua Dongo. When I met him at the debate, we initially started with three, like I mentioned, and then him, and then others joined me from various communities, from the Sikh community, from the Hindu, the Govans, uh, the, you know, the Muslims are into two, mm -hmm. four different sects, uh, the Bohoras, the Smileys, <coughs> they all joined me in this course. And this is something, uh, is, is a positive uh, way, because when I saw this young boy behaving like that, he was like, you know, very proud. And the KFC uh, lady at the counter, you know, hugged him, Dugiango. So this has brought us together. So how are you planning, Joshua, to use this to your full advantage mm. as a community with full recognition now, with all the challenges that they say they have been facing? You know, uh, if you look at it in a literal, not a metaphorical view, mm -hmm. it takes time. Even for you to grow a plant or even a child to grow, the child has to first crawl, walk, run, and maybe fly mm -hmm. if you have the faith to do so. This is something that will take us a little longer, mm -hmm. but we, we are going to use different government agencies, uh, private institutions, to give civic education, to try and reduce that little uh, tension between uh, some of the Kenyan nation employers, because I know the problem always starts with employers that a so-and-so employer ananyanyasa kwa kiswahili, ananyanyasa wenzao, na nini. So I think from this point of view, it's going to work. Because from time to time, they will slowly and gradually integrate and feel that this is home. We want to see much of uh, Kenyan nations in the street, maybe if there's a problem. We want to see them come out and speak. We need to see them in patriotic uh, uh, fronts, maybe Madarakadi. We want to see Kenyan nations filling the stadium all right yes thank you so yes. much for coming in and just letting us in on what this really means for the asian community and joshua uh, don't go no. sorry just yes, want to clarify mm -hmm. when the president gave his consent verbally when we took the delegation this is for kenyan asian heritage okay. those who have a lineage it's not for expatriates all right Thank you very much, Joshua Dongo Nono, the co-pioneer of this particular agenda, as well as Farah Manzur, the pioneer of the 44th tribe agenda. Thank you for coming and in. I and would yes, sorry, like to thank His Excellency, uh, the All President. Right. All right. For thank you very much, Farah. Thank you so for much for giving us this recognition. He has left a legacy behind, and we Kenyan nations will remember him for decades and legends. All to right, come. Farah. All right. Thank you. Let's now cross over to the Pan African.